one about the one that goes across the bottom of Lake Washington? Hello, welcome to another installment of the Hot Shop Live Show. I'm Bonnie Wright, and I'm going to be your MC today for the Hot Shop Live Show here at the Museum of Glass. So welcome everyone. This week's artist here at the Hot Shop at the Museum of Glass is Thurman Statum. Uh, Thurman has been working with glass for more than 40 years, and he initially got his start back in the 70s at Pilchuck. Uh, glass School here in this region. Thurman's especially known for his large installation style artworks, chairs, ladders, and other artwork, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about that today. Uh, we also have some special guests from the community here to speak to us a bit more about um, arts in the community and social adv advocacy and so forth, so we're really excited to deliver this program to you today. Um, this installment of Hot Shop Live Show uh, will feature the making of a glass fish, so you're going to see a lot of that going on behind me here at the Hot Shop in between uh, our interviews, and I'll make sure to catch you up along the way uh, what's going on um, as we progress through the show. So um, first I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the artwork and some of the videos that we're going to see during this installment. Uh, Thurman is especially uh, um, concerned with the welfare of children and their health and has had some um, artwork through um, the King's Daughters Children's Hospital in Norfolk, Virginia that he's going to speak about a little bit. Um, the fish that are featured in that, ins in that installation are what we're working from for the artwork today, the fish that we're going to be making here on the floor. Um, so um, quickly, I think we have something to show you from the um, installation that was done at that hospital. There have been countless pieces of glass art made at the Chrysler Museum Glass Studio, but these particular pieces won't go in any museum. These hot blobs will eventually become fish that will go in the lobby of the Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters. It's all thanks to a partnership between the Chrysler Glass Studio, CHKD, and artist Thurman Statum. I looked for a viable construct, and that's something that would make a difference, just to one individual or even more. So um, somehow or another, I found out that, that Norfolk hosts the only children's museum, with, I mean children's hospital with architecture in the state. The idea is that when kids come into the lobby and parents, they're truly amazed with what they see. He came to me. I was um, diagnosed with cancer back in August, and he came to me in um, October and asked me if I wanted to help because I was more creative. I make a lot of jewelry. So he asked me if I would come help and I was sure. Not only did Sarah help think up the design of the nearly 100 glass fish, she also got hands on by helping Statum and Glass Studio staff actually make some of the fish. Keep going, keep going. I was overwhelmed because I was lucky enough he chose me. And I did, honestly, I didn't know how to feel because it was like, I felt like. He was giving me all the power, and that's what he's done. He's just told me to create everything, and so it's kind of empowerment. It's pretty cool how they they just take a big blob and turn it into a piece of art. It's pretty awesome. The week-long glass blowing project is all part of a partnership that everyone hopes will brighten the day of some of the most resilient people you will ever meet. To be a part of any of their future, on any level, is just a great honor for me, and and. You know, those kids are generally kids that have to go to hospitals and get treated are pretty tough, let alone kids with, that have been sort of afflicted with blood disorders and cancer. And generally they sort of minimize my own anxieties because they, they're heroes. And I get paid in a lot of forms and just the friendships that I have with the museum supporters, with the hospital supporters, just, just, you can't buy that. I hope it makes them feel, you know, more, like they're more at home. You see the artwork, it's pretty, it's pretty 
pretty cool. As great as the artwork will be in the lobby of CHKD, there was an even better announcement that was the best news of the day. Sarah's cancer is in condition. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. All right, so I'd like to officially introduce everyone here to Thurman Statum. Here's Thurman. He's here this week working. All right, so Thurman, tell us a little bit more about your work at this hospital. Well, well, um, I, you know, initially, initially in Norfolk, is I have family there, so I wanted to come down there, and we did a reconnaissance mission at the hospital, and it really is like a giant community, giant community center. And you know, after you know, I was thinking, what could I do there that would be really viable? And there's the Chrysler Museum shop, and I thought it'd be really neat to work with them too. And then I also thought about like what you know what our kids capable of and you know honestly I was inspired by the children design glass program here because the the works they do are so much better than my own to start with and and it really made me realize that kids can make capable works that are as viable as any other professional artists and 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 um, so basically through working at the hospital and and working in the in the blood disorders and cancer ward you know, and the, and the hospital's culture and the receptivity that they had towards some of these out-of-the-box ideas, we, you know, we, we, came up in the, we came up with this idea of making this artwork that not only just decorated the museum, but changed the culture and the viewpoint and actually had a profound effect on the well-being of, of the institution, of the, of the patients, you know, with the, with the idea that if we can help one person or incorporate, you know, art as a tool to sort of for healing in in this process of working. So, you know, it was a very broad thing. We, you know, we we even got involved with um, all different types of aspects of how therapists work, how hospitals work, and you know, it was really sort of a good working ground, you know, for it. You know, the the as the project as the project developed the hospital invested more and more into it. Initially, you know, the installation was just going to be in a, in a therapy room, and we ended up doing the lobby, you know. And, um, you know, and, and, it, and it, it, it brought a whole lot of questions, and, you know, in terms of how programming is developing, how well-being is sort of incorporated into, a uh, patient's well-being is incorporated into it, you know, and, and also how this institution functions within the context of the community is such a huge part of it you know i, I um you know it's, i hope that helps a little bit hmm? yeah awesome i i think it's a great project and um that you work so closely with the people there at the hospital um we also wanted to chat with you a little bit more about your work at hilltop artists here our tacoma institution of uh, hilltop artists in its early days um thurman uh was an early resident at the Hilltop Artists Program, and that's a program that was started here in 1994 within the community of Tacoma. Uh, and you'll hear more about it later in the show, but I was hoping that, Thurman, you could let us know a little bit more about your um, time with that. Okay, hi. Um, I, um, I, I remember Charlie Perry talking to me about opening uh, bottles at Hilltop, you know, these, these, and I think it was an environmental grant that was given and, and the artists and, and kids were sort of using a glory hole. And then a, a person named Kathy Kilparrick got involved with Dale and, and, the, and they invested a lot of their efforts into getting a furnace and getting things running. You know, when I, when I came there, um, and I think a lot of different artists were, it was really competitive to be there because regardless of how developed or, or how beginning the program was, it paid better than Pilchuck, if you want to know the truth. So, so we, we actually had income from it, you know. And then, um, and then I, I remember, um, you know, going there and, and um, initially having trouble recruiting students. There were not many students, so we, we went out and walked around the neighborhood and, and brought, you know, brought kids in. And we were thinking, how could we keep the kids here? So we had a bunch of food in the refrigerator. You know, we got the we stocked up the refrigerator with a lot of food. You know, and um, you know, I, um, you know, I, I, it's, it was just, uh, 
you know, I've always been interested in working with communities and discovering how and what it could do. You know, I think there's, a, there's parts of the program that, in fact, I think it was a model program, and I think it's something about the city in terms of how it functions and how, how friendly it is or, or in, within institutions for it to be adopted because when the school system got involved, I remember these kids having a, you know, being in school and discovering that they were sort of like the, 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 the challenged ones academically. And then I, you know, I saw them change. In fact, in fact, some of the kids from Hilltop actually ended up coming to my parents' house at Christmas in Washington, D.C. at one time. You know, I, um, you know I, I did a show at Traver, and the work that they did was so viable that, um, at, Traver, at Traver, William Traver Gallery, the work they did was so viable that we gave them half the gallery, and, and it, it added a conceptual level to the show that was really, really wonderful, you know. Great, thank you, Thurman. And I think uh, we have a wonderful video to show everybody to, uh, of the Hilltop program. So we're gonna go there next. Before I started doing glass, I would just do exactly what I wanted to do. So if I wanted to drive your car, I'm gonna drive your car regardless on what you feel, how you feel about the whole point. <laughs> James ran in the door with a whole group of other boys. My friends and I was throwing cherry bombs in the maybe's and uh, we seen a car speeding up faster towards us and uh, I kind of flicked the cherry bomb at the car and when it blew up, we started running and we was running trying to look for somewhere to ditch the police and we saw two doors open at the middle school. So we ran through the door and when we ran in there, it was kids in there with hot glass on a pipe, but I didn't have no time to stop because I was, you know, busy running from the police and we ditched the cops and then a couple weeks later, maybe two weeks later, I came back to see what they was doing. And when I found out what they was doing, I was thinking in my head, these kids are crazy for playing with hot glass, you know what I'm saying? But I would, just wanted to see how it was, so I tried it. When I first met James, James was a very um, quiet person, uh, didn't say too much. And this being in the program has really opened him up. It ain't everybody that stands in front of a 2,000 degree furnace trying to get some molten glass. And that might be one of the harder parts. And the material itself demands a uh, team effort. When you first start doing it, it's kind of hard to work in a team and stay focused because you don't really understand and you want to know more about what's going on. You really need a team and you got to have cooperation. And without cooperation and focus, you can't do it regardless. So. It's kind of a challenge. If I can do this, it's, that's the next puzzle. I know it's doing what I want it to do. To them, it's like they actually created a piece. With blowing glass, I can make something and have it. You know what I'm saying? I can always have it there. Remember when I made it, why I made it, how I made it, what it took to make it. Most of these kids, I think, are very bright, very creative, and, and full of a lot to express, and haven't been able to express it in a productive way. All right, well, I'd like to thank Thurman for his time with us um, so far. Uh, and now I'm going to throw it to my friend and colleague, Katie Phelps, who's here to interview Kit Evans about the Hilltop Artist Program. Thanks so much, Bonnie. I am excited to be here with Kit Evans, who's the executive director of Hilltop Artists. Kit, why don't you tell us a little bit about how Hilltop works today? Well, Hilltop works today a lot like it did in the beginning. Some things have changed, though. Initially, when Hilltop Artists got going with Kathy Kapirik, it was fueled by passion and the community, members of the community from the school superintendent to, you know, artists, and it was an amazing thing. But at some point, that had to shift to having some really good management. As a matter of fact, Hilltop Artist was about to go down in flames <laughs> when Luana Welch, who was then the program director, um, became the executive director. And in her tenure there, she turned the program around and got some structure in. She solved the financial problems. She made a deal with the IRS. You know how those things, <laughs> nonprofits are not for the weak. Um, 
And currently, the team that I get to lead is an incredible team. The artists are amazing, financially solid. Our board of directors is very engaged in governance. And we have the best donors and community supporters in the world. All of that stuff rolls up to youth success. It makes a huge difference. And art underpins it all. So can you tell us a little bit more about Hilltop's recipe for success? Well, those things that I just mentioned, but I think the profound reason it's successful is it's the right tool for the job. When you have students who are vulnerable academically, who have been dealt some pretty seriously hard hands, um, and you get them to a place where they can experience their own creativity, there's this thing inside that no circumstances can take away from you, which is your ability to be creative. And when they come to Hilltop Artists, it's they get to move their bodies. They get to sit up and sit down. They get to break things. Things don't work, but nobody hollers. It's an amazing community that's different than anything they've experienced. And after a while, they relax and they start trusting. The single most important thing in youth success is a trusted adult, a long-term relationship. So we offer that, plus the self-discovery of the amazing qualities in glass. That is so inspirational. So I understand that this fall is your 20th anniversary here at Hilltop. What are your hopes and goals for the next 20 years of the program? Well, we now have evaluations in place so we can actually prove that we're successful. That was a big, big one. I think our goals and hopes for the future are that we're able to serve more kids, that we're able to build out a greater infrastructure of community support, um, which we are working on, and that we're going to be able, as a, as a visionary leader in this, help the entire community, not just this community, but others as well, understand that art is the solution for almost every issue that communities face. And that's a huge mission on our part, is to exemplify that, to sit at the policy tables, to talk to people, to encourage them that art is scalable, art's affordable, it's easy to make happen. And when you use art in your community, you can heal many of the things that other things can't even approach. And we're an example, we're a perfect example of that. So I overheard you chatting with Thurman earlier this morning, and he was telling you about a Hilltop alumni that popped up in an unexpected place. Care to share? Yeah, Thurman was in Germany, apparently in some tiny little town at a government-owned glass factory, and there was a Hilltop artist, an alumni, who had somehow heard about the place, applied for a job, and there he was. Wow, that is so great. So we are here, very excited here at Museum of Glass to host Hilltop's 20th anniversary exhibition. It opens here on September 13th. Kit, can you tell us a little bit about the story we'll be telling in that show? Well, first I want to say that the, the story begins with the incredible fact that a world-class institution like the Museum of Glass is actually hosting an exhibition. Another glass organization, yes, but we're a small, youth-based nonprofit. But the Museum of Glass has stepped forward and said, we are partners, we are part of the same thing. And it's an incredible opportunity. So that said, we love you guys. <laughs> The story that's going to be telling is going to be about things like resiliency and optimism, collaboration and community. Those are the things that you have to have to have a successful nonprofit. As it turns out, those are the things you have to have in your programs. The kids have to take away those things in order to be successful. The story we want to tell is these things are possible, that there are opportunities at all times, that to, in, to give these to kids through art is a powerful, powerful tool. And that we want people to wake up to that and maybe take it away with them back to their communities. All right, thank you very much, Kit. It's such a pleasure to have you here today. Uh, let's go check out and see how it's going on the floor. Bonnie, it's pretty hot up here. How's it doing down there? Pretty hot down here. <laughs> We're working on the fish that Thurman was um, going to be making here today at noon. It's the initial bubble starting out and it's going to be like a long fish with fins and it's going to be incorporated into a larger installation. Um, Thurman likes to take these glass fish and then sandblast and paint them. So after the sandblasting process, that kind of primes that surface in order to receive more paint. And Thurman is, in the meantime, behind me, been working on a chalk drawing on the floor of this fish that is uh, going to be made with eyes and fins and a tail and so forth. And it's going to be um, mounted on a wall with several other fish like it. So, so far we've um, gathered up quite a bit of glass and we're um, now stretching it off the moil 
and stretching it into a long body form that's going to be progressing throughout this whole uh, hour. Uh, I'm glad that um, uh, Katie was able to interview Kit Evans uh, about local community endeavors uh, like Hilltop Artists. And you're going to hear more as we progress through the show. So the bubble's getting a bit longer now. Okay. All right, so right now we're using paddles in order to shield Gabe's uh, hand from the heat and his arm from the heat. He's also wearing a silver kind of Kevlar glove in order to shield his arm from the radiant heat. And he's using a, sh a wadded up pad of wet newspaper in order to shape the glass into a longer form. Okay, so we're about midway through making the body form. There's a lot of little bits that need to be added to enhance the features and uh, fins of the piece. So there you see another drawing of a fish that they made this week. They've been working on quite a few fish for this installation. As well as many other pieces here that you see on the floor for other installations. Right, so this week, so far, Thurman has been making pieces, okay, he's been making pieces like those you see on the floor. These large orbs are to be part of a larger installation as are the vessels. So you can see a long, thin uh, cylinder vessel here on the floor and a branch. So they're working on several different pieces th uh, throughout the week for many different installations. Um, Thurman has been involved quite a bit with community, um, several different groups in the past. Um, he is an advocate for many groups, including, as you've learned already in this show, um, children with cancer. Um, he's worked quite a bit in the Native community in um, Omaha uh, and many others. And uh, we're going to hear more throughout the show.
All right, so we have uh, a few different instances where we've worked with Thurman in the past, including his last residency here. So we'd like to um, show you a little bit more about his previous time here at the museum. I'm Thurman Statham, and I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I'm a painter sculptor. I'm, I'm trained in the crafts and glass blowing, and um, I've sort of evolved from that. I actually still use glass blowing in the work, but um, I do public art. I guess by public art, I mean um, in installations. I do I do temporal ones at, at institutions and cultural centers, and and I also do um, permanent things at like airports or or. Um, you know, libraries and permanent sort of applications too. I'm a big fan that any event that happens in anyone's life or anything that can be resourced from within and used as an inspiration. I might respond to a, a, a particular environment aesthetically in an ergonomic way or physically in an er ergonomic way, um, but, um, but it, it really varies a lot. I do also work with art therapy, and I use art as a tool for advocacy. So a lot of times that advocacy issue is explored in the artwork. Um, I'm here at the Museum of Glass, and I'm, uh, I'm working on a multiple range of projects. Because I want to do so many different kind of things, I'm open to suggestions as we go along. On a more personal level, I'm also exploring um, my own ideas in glass and sort of innovating with this team of, of people here and figuring out things that I haven't made before. We got money. Just a slide, Ben, and we're good. Just, you know, they're, they're understanding my flexibility and form and, 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 you know, making decisions while we're blowing and you know, it's really great. It's asymmetrical? Yeah, it is. Maybe we can flatten it so it's no longer round, but I don't know if that's... No, no, this is going to, when it bends, it's going to move. Yep. Um, we're making parts for a, a, a whole range of projects. Some of them local, some of them national, and some of them uh, for a show that I'm doing at the Abeltoff Museum. There's, a, there's an element of unknown, hopefully, that, you know, we have to contend with in each piece. So it's an element I'm going to use in a painting. It's a, obviously it's a crystal ball. I don't have specific uh, metaphors or meanings to objects. They're done more from impressions. And I think, I think to sort of tell you the source ideas or what I'm thinking could be misleading. In that, um, you know, I think, I think the language of painting and objects is a visual language and an intuitive language. There might be some intellectual references but I think people spend too much time looking for those. Actually, I think they need to sort of learn the trust that they can understand art and what these what things mean in reference to who they are. It's great to be here. It's an interesting um, environment to work in. It's sort of like being in a big nightclub. You know, there's the lights above and this, you know this multi-floor space. Raise the roof. All right, we're back. I'm going to fill you in a little bit more about what's going on on the floor. The fish is a bit more elongated now. The body is much longer, so it's been stretched out, and they've kind of jacked in a line for the fin at the very back of the fish. So that separate area at the very end that kind of looks like the top of a bowling pin is going to end up being the fin for the fish. And its mouth is what will be attached to the blowpipe right now. So that's going to be knocked off there and that will be the mouth, just to give you an idea of what's going on with the piece. So next on our agenda, we have an interview with Mayor, Mayor Marilyn Strickland with Katie up on the um, upper level. So I'm going to cut it back to Katie now, who's going to interview the mayor.
right, thanks, Bonnie. It's such an honor to be here with Mayor Marilyn Strickland. Mayor Strickland, thank you so much for taking the time today. Why do you feel that art is important to communities like Tacoma? Well, if you think about the renaissance of Tacoma as a city, the arts have played an integral part in that. And it's the creation of art, it's the community support for institutions such as the Museum of Glass, the Tacoma Art Museum, the Museum of History, the LeMay Museum, the Children's Museum of Tacoma. And I'm kind of rattling off a long list because Tacoma has the distinction of being the city in America that has the highest per capita of museums outside of Washington, D.C. I did not know that. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about why art enriches your life personally? Are you an artist? I'm not an artist, but I remember being an elementary and middle school student and just the opportunity to have art classes and exposure to the arts as a young student. But also, too, as an adult, um, you know, when I travel around the country, I always try and take time to visit museums and appreciate art. I love the fact that in the city of Tacoma, because of the 1% for the arts, that we actually produce public art for all people to enjoy. And, you know, art just brings beauty to life. It helps students become more creative and more inquisitive, and so it just really enhances the richness of a community in so many ways. As somebody who grew up here, I couldn't agree more. Uh, how do you feel that art is important to the future of cities like Tacoma? Well, I think that if you are a city that really embraces the idea of supporting the arts and promoting the arts, you can actually differentiate yourself. And I often talk about the fact that, you know, Tacoma's history is that of an industrial city, and for a long time it was polluted, and we've managed to really make a comeback. And when we talk about some of the important decisions that we made, we renovated our downtown, we reclaimed historic properties, we put a lot of effort into improving our neighborhoods, but we really had a strong focus on promoting the arts and really making sure that it's inclusive so that everyone can enjoy them. Thank you. So how can we help support the arts and museums like Museum of Glass here in Tacoma? Well, I think one of the things that we can do is continue to use these great institutions and the people who work here to really raise Tacoma's profile. I mean, I, I don't know if some people know this, but you know, Tacoma, Washington, a city that's mid-sized in America of 200,000 people, has a sister city in Biot, France. And it is the fact that we have a museum of glass and are dedicated to glass blowing as a community that made that relationship possible. Glass blowing is a really big deal in Biot. And because of the commonality that we share, we now have a sister city in the south of France. That's pretty spectacular. It is pretty spectacular. And as a matter of fact, we'll be having two artists from the city of Biot here in the hot shop in October. We'll have Antoine Perini and Nicolas Lati, and they will be here uh, about the third week in October. So that'll be very exciting. All right, well, thank you to Mayor Strickland. Again, it's an honor to have you here. And let's go see how that fish is going. Bonnie, what's going on down there? All right, All right so we're back, and Thurman's going to tell us a little bit more about what's going on with a fish and how he incorporates them together and uses painting. Um, I, I, actually, these are going to be paintings. They sort of, they've grown from, you know, the installation at the, at the hospital sort of influenced me. I guess the kids had an effect, and... They, they sort of encouraged me to change the work that I'm doing. And, and so what I'm doing, so what my, uh, what these are gonna be done, these are almost like canvases. So they're being abstracted even more so, and then I'll actually take them into the studio and, and the, you know, they're hollow so I can put things inside of them and put objects on the, on the outside. So they're, they're, they're actually more like finished, they will be almost finished objects in themselves. You know, like a, this, and it's sort of, ex, you know, we, the team here is, is, is tricky to work with because they're so good at everything. So everything I draw, they can sort of emulate. And at this point, this is the first time we've made a tail like this, um, technically. And um, fish, you know, I, I wanted to do fish because everyone has done fish. So I was, you know, then it becomes a real challenge to sort of be innovative with it. The, the, the mayor left, huh? Oh, no, I wanted to get her on the floor to, to blow glass. Oh, well, that's, you know. Um, so, so I, this is probably at this point we're gonna they're gonna start cutting cutting the, this part here. They're gonna start cutting it, and 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 so we're, right now it looks a little bit like a paddle, but then we're cut it and pull it and stuff. Yeah, excellent, excellent. You know, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. You know, I'm um, being a glass blower. I'm sort of not used to being uh, hands off as much on it. And um, 
but um, you know, it's it's they they themselves are just so good at what they do. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think, Thurman, you and I had also discussed uh, the early days in Tacoma, that you had a show here in Tacoma before the museum even existed, and I think you wanted to chat a, li a little bit more about that. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, uh, early, early in, the, in the early 70s, um, Ann Hallberg, who was sort of the, one of the co-founders of Pilchuck with her husband, John, asked me to do a show in Tacoma of all the artists that were at Pilchuck. So uh, a guy named Little, who's he's passed, had a space, and it's amazing, you know, coming into Tacoma. At the time, it really smelled bad here. It was really awful, you know, and there was no hilltop, there was no glass museum. It was just uh, 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 this building that no one wanted to rent or come here, and we did this fabulous show, and we all had a lot of fun, and all the artists had a lot of fun, and, and to see things have changed here so much, you know, you know, when the, the museum has impressed me so much in terms of how it's, func how it, how it, you know, what it's doing within the community and how it's redefining itself. It's, it's sort of secondary that it's glass. It's really, it's, it's actually, it's become such a catalyst, you know. I, I'm so impressed since I've been here conceptually. See, now they're cutting the fish, you know. So I'm talking about two things at the same time. I hope you don't mind, you know, and, um, you know, and, and I think, um, you know, at the, I think the time we did that show, this was a super fun site, you know? It was, you know, and now it's, now it's not. It's just wonderful. Thank you, Thurman. That was a great uh, picture of early um, Tacoma when it was still kind of starting to develop a bit more. So I'm gonna head over here away from the fire and we can take a peek at what's going on with the fish behind us. So as Thurman just mentioned, that flattened tip of the bubble has now become the fin. And you notice that it was sheared off so that it would be a nice flat fin at the very back. So, so far we have the body and the back fin. All right, so Thurman is here uh, in part this week because we have a program called Fuel Their Fire. It's a sponsorship program where artists who can, can come and work for a full week from a Wednesday through a Sunday. And um, Thurman just happens to be one of those artists this summer. Uh, most generously, uh, Jones Stone Cipher and family have given um, their sponsorships to Thurman for this week. So we'd like to thank them very much. Thurman has definitely been very prolific during this week's residency so far. And you can see evidence of that throughout the hot shop.
All right, so down here on the floor, the form and the shape of this fish have uh, been gradually forming, to use the word twice. Uh, the fish has broad sides, as you might be familiar with, you know, just from seeing a fish. It has the, the back is very skinny, the belly is very skinny, but the sides, like the ribs on a fish, are very uh, flat. So they used a couple of cork paddles in order to make the body long, sleek, um, and slippery, like a real fish. So it's somewhat flattened on the sides, and then that final bowling pin tip was flattened and sheared off, and now it's even looking to be a more smooth look. That uh, fin has been manipulated several times to make a long pointy tip to both ends of the fin, and it's getting smoother and smoother every time it goes into the glory hole. Up where the piece is attached to the pipe, as I mentioned before, that's where the piece is going to be cracked off later, and then a mouth is going to be cold worked in later. So if you're familiar with glass, you'll know that cold working is what you do to glass after it is finished and off the pipe. You can manipulate it by cutting um, to finish it, so that mouth will be later cold worked. You can see that two eyes have been added to the piece as well during our time together. They're going to be working on the fins next. I hear them discussing the dorsal fin at this moment. All right, Thurman has gathered the dorsal fin himself, so he's starting that on the other side of the shop with a block to round up that gather. All right, I'm here with our executive director, Susan Warner, who's going to tell us a little bit more about membership at the museum and how you yourself can be involved. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you, audience, for being here. Thank you, online audience. And of course, I want to thank also my special friends, Mayor Strickland and Kit Evans, for participating today. And of course, wonderful artist Thurman Statham over there at the far end. This is actually a pilot project for the Museum of Glass. We hope you're enjoying it. And we'd be really interested in your feedback about this experience in the last hour. What you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, any ideas for future developments for us, we would really appreciate. And you can email us at media at museumofglass.org or swarner at museumofglass.org. This is um, also um, a special opportunity for me to thank Joan Stonecipher and family who are sponsors of Thurman's residency. Uh, they sponsored it through the Fuel Their Fire program, which is an online auction which allows people to sponsor particular residencies. If you like this exciting programming, 
please think about becoming a member of the Museum of Glass. There are membership levels at a variety of different points with various benefits, and it supports programming like this at the Museum of Glass. So our next broadcasts will happen on August 29th with Irish artist Fred Curtis that will be rich in folklore and music, and October 19th with Maestro Lino Taliapetra in celebration of his 80th birthday. So thank you, audience, both here and online. We appreciate you mightily. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> thank you. So in the meantime, everyone, the fish has developed its dorsal fin with frilliness throughout. You probably noticed that Gabe was cutting with the scissors, including right now. So that's a lot of the detail for this piece is in the fins. Thurman has another gather. All right, in combination with its partner fish, this fish, um, well, in a grouping of fish, partners in fishery, all of these pieces will be mounted on a wall together and they will be sandblasted and painted, um, which Thurman especially likes to do with a lot of his plate glass installations and others um, that you may or may not be familiar with. So it's colorless right now, but later it's going to be quite colorful. That is all done after the piece is annealed or slowly cooled here in our annealers at the hot shop and taken out cold worked with the, the cold worked mouth that I discussed earlier and then the painting can start and the sandblasting can start. So they're adding some side fins. That was a gather that Thurman had brought over to add the side fin. So it looks like they probably have one more side fin to go on the piece. So Ben and Gabe are adding a lot of extra bits to the piece to add to that fishy flair. And Thurman's bringing over another reheated gather, I think. All right, so Thurman is now dotting this gather on the other side of the fish so the hot glass sticks to the other hot glass. And then they can pull up the pipe to get the amount of glass that they desire and then cut it right off. And Gabe is using the scissors now to manipulate all of those frills in the fins. Scissors can be of multiple uses in glass making. You can cut off pieces or you can decorate pieces. For those of you here in the live audience, I hope you can appreciate the view you're getting looking into the glory hole and seeing a fish rotisserizing inside of there looking at you. It's a great view.
some more refinements with the scissors. And it looks like the fish is coming together. I think we're nearing the finish of the project. We'll see you soon, kid. All right, so they're doing a final fire polish over the piece in the glory hall. And then they're going to anneal it. So you've noticed that Thurman suited up into the outfit that we use in order to load things into the annealer where we slowly cool down things we make here in the hot shop. This is all protective clothing in order to keep you safe because you're leaning into, a, into an oven. You're leaning in there with a hot piece of glass. So you need to be ready to be insulated and safe. You can see that the fish ended up having like a, a tail as if it's swimming. It's slightly tilted to one side, so it looks like it's an active fish that it's actually swimming. Right. We're doing a final fire polish now all over. And Thurman himself is going to catch the piece and put it away.
coming out of the flash. All right, so this is where the piece comes off the pipe. You have to add a little bit of stress around the point at which there's that skinny part where the glass was connected to the, to the pipe. With a little bit of water, it shocks the glass, and you can hit the pipe, and it will come right off. All right, fire polished mouth. Thurman Statum, everyone. All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. Got to learn a little bit more about Thurman. We hope you enjoy the exhibitions here at the museum. But before you leave today, we want to free it up for a few questions. If you have some questions for Thurman Statum, just a couple questions before we end the broadcast today. Do we have any questions? Katie has a mic in the audience if you'd like to raise your hand to indicate a question. All right. Well, there it is. Thank you, Hot Shop team and Thurman Statum. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Hot, Lop Hot Shop Live Show. Thank you for attending. Bye-bye.